Back here, first things first, we're going viral. Brought to you by Best Western Hotels and Resorts. Book now at bestwestern.com. Bed Simmons made his first career three-pointer this preseason. And a New Jersey area watering hole is doubling down on the achievement, offering free beer to every person in the bar when Simmons makes a three uh -huh. in a regular season. Uh -huh. he makes it. Any chance this refrigerator oh. gets unlocked? Yeah, he gonna he gonna make a three this year. He'll make a number of One threes must this year. One take a three. It's he'll make a three. Make he'll, listen, a three. that's gonna get unlocked. They're stealing that from what the bar in Cleveland did about when the Browns get their first win. Go ahead, see. Hey, I'm gonna tell you, Ben Simmons makes a three. No. I'm gonna break my. Hey, no. I haven't had a drink in almost 30 no, no, years, no, Jenna. No, 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 no. <laughs> 10,000 days, 15 million minutes, Jen. I haven't had a drink. Ben Simmons drains a three. I'm gonna have me a non-alcoholic non uh, beer on him. Oh. Uh, Okay, yep. that's uh, right. Non alcohol is okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll have some NAs at my house right, waiting for you, my man. How about I'll, I'll, have, gotcha. I'll have a beer? That's, uh, he I'll hasn't have, had a drink in 30 years, Jenna. Uh, it's about you drink Mick Ultras like, that like is, they're candy. That is not true. Jenna, oh, I'm sorry. Mick, 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 that's one of those. That's one of those Hall of Fame gold jackets compared to my high school softball thing. Yeah, let's, right. let's try to. Listen, 161 career games he's gone without a three. Yeah, it's going to change. <laughs> it's it's going to change. He's going to make a three this year. He's going to make three. I'm getting me a drink. All right, here we go. Kawhi and the Clippers in the Bay to face the Warriors in their new arena. The Claw poured in 21 points in 21 minutes, leading the Clippers to a big win. Steph Curry scored 23 points. He also turned the ball over eight times. Ooh. And he missed nine three-pointers. Here's Warriors head coach Steve Kerr after the game. I mean, this is not, you know, not a one-off. It's this is the this is the reality. There's going to be nights like this this year. So, we, you got to play through it, and you got to keep fighting and keep getting better. I'm not a moral victory type of guy. I'm not leaving this game looking for something to build off on. We suck, and we got to get better. Nick, you laughed throughout that interview. Well, just listen, Kerr, Steve Kerr just flatly saying, hey, man, y'all get ready. This is about to be rough. <laughs> yeah. I've never heard a coach say that after, after the first, the first game. game. And Draymond saying I'm not a moral victory guy. Yeah, uh, uh, Draymond, you, you were minus 35 in 28 minutes. Like, of course, there's not, mu there's not many moral victories to take from it. Now... As far as the, what did you want to ask me about overall? I apologize. Is it more than likely looking pretty good? They will not make the playoffs this year? I won't go that far. I know a lot of people are going to say today that the Warriors are not going to make the playoffs. The problem is, if you have them out, who is taking their place? It, it feels, I feel like we are all very confident there are six teams that are going to be in the Western Conference playoffs. Lakers, Clippers, Houston, Utah, Denver are five to me, mortal locks. And Portland is a very close to a mortal lock. So there's six of them. Those other two remaining spots, I, I think the Warriors are getting one of them. I picked the Warriors to get one of them. Now, they're going to have to do it through Steph being special. And that, C, was the most concerning part of last night. Mm -hmm. He wasn't. What, right. Was not their defense. Because the defense, that's they're not going to give up 140 a night. But that's going to be a bottom six, bottom seven defense in all of basketball. The way yes. to overcome that is Steph to be an MVP candidate, as we said we thought he had the potential to be. Steph playing that poorly and looking that overwhelmed at times, if that continues, then of course they won't make the playoffs. But in the NBA, if you've got a top five guy, you make the NBA playoffs if the guy's healthy throughout the year. That's why I'm still betting on the Warriors to make it to the tournament. Well, typically, Nick, when you have a top guy, you don't have some of the deficiencies that they have on the other on the other side. If you look at him and D'Angelo Russell, I'm with you. I don't believe this is a good fit long term. They were minus 32 overall when they were on the court together. So you know with them being in the backcourt, you're going to be challenged defensively. But... The Clippers took a page out of what they did in the playoffs. Not the Clippers, but other teams to the Warriors when they had injuries. They were double teaming Steph around half court. He was forced into some bad threes. And with all those defenders around him, they forced him into those turnovers. So, Steve Kerr. I know you've had a great job the last several years, Steve, just looking up and down, watching your team win, not saying nothing. You're going to have to earn your money this year. You're going to have to come up with some schemes. You're going to have to come up with, with something offensively to be able to get guys involved. But Draymond Green, Draymond shouldn't say we sucked. He need to look in the mirror. Draymond Green was awful. And Nick, you had some stat of Draymond Green last, outside of seven or eight feet. Last year, last year, Draymond Green, not outside of 18 feet, outside of eight feet 
was 29% from the field. Now, we were just knocking Ben Simmons. If Ben Simmons <laughs> took those shots, he wouldn't be much worse than 29%, and at least he can get to the rim. Like, Draymond got that big contract, courtesy of my guy Rich Ball and Clutch Sports, <laughs> and he gonna have to earn it this year by anchoring what will be a substandard defense and getting back to some of that playmaker role that he was so good at a few years ago. And for those who are thinking Steph Curry, he should be in the conversation for MVP, Nick, I don't think his body's gonna be able to take it. When you look at the wear and tear, the way they were trapping him, the way he was having to run off the ball, like even watching his body language, there were times during the game, he was exhausted like this was a playoff game. So I don't know, with Clay probably missing most of the season, at best, Steph's going to put up big numbers, but as far as MVP, his team's not going to be a top four seed. I don't think that's going to be on the board for Steph this year, his third MVP. I'm so glad you brought that up because when we were talking about the start of the season earlier this week, we said there was really one path for the Warriors to be successful, playoff bound, all of it, and that was, well, Steph's going to have to play lights out every night. And I said, well, Steph usually doesn't have to play in the regular season. He doesn't have to be that successful. And you said, well, he's a superstar and mm -hmm. he's absolutely going to have to. Well, there's got to be another way. If, if it's not going to only go through Steph, you saw game one, he wasn't a superstar. No, 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 no. Give me another way. There's no other way. There's no other way. Really? They, they, <laughs> listen, I, yep. do you know, the guys who got big minutes last night, Glenn Robinson III, Eric Pascal. You, listen, it turns out the Marquez, Chris, and Eric Pascal, that duo replacing Kevin Durant, <laughs> that ain't great. Right. And it's not good for your basketball team. <laughs> it is all about Steph. And this is... It, this is exciting, and people think I'm, I'm a Steph critic. I, I didn't love the Warriors once they added Durant, that thing. Sure. I'm excited to see Steph as a one-man show because he has been, uh, by everyone other than Michael Jordan, myself included, elevated into pantheon discussion for the league. And we've seen these other guys. We saw Duncan when he had Robinson. We saw Duncan before they had Manu and Parker as great players. We saw, mm -hmm. we saw Duncan in different spots. We saw Michael Jordan, even though they didn't have playoff success, before Pippen got there, averaged 37 a game and get his team to the postseason. We've seen LeBron on super teams and on what Chris calls the four pieces of paper team, his last year in Cleveland. <laughs> and we've seen those guys be successful. We've seen Harden with a star next to him by himself, top two MVP in both situations. Now we get to see Steph without the second greatest shooter all time alongside him, who he's always mm -hmm. had. Without a league MVP alongside him, who he's had the last three years. And this is a big year for Steph. I, I don't want to be unfair, but I don't think I'm being unfair. This is a big year for Steph Curry's legacy. Because if they go 32 and 50, because he doesn't have enough help, that then when you're talking about, is he the second greatest point guard of all time? Well, I know my guy Isaiah Thomas would say, I played on some teams that looked a lot like this Warriors team. We didn't yeah. go no 32 and 50. And so there, it is important for Steph that he doesn't carry him to a championship, but that he carries them to a playoff berth. At least for me, that is an important part of how we're going to remember this part of Steph's career, see? And one thing, too, we have to realize is every night they're not going to be facing the Clippers. Yep. Top to bottom, the Clippers, man on, I mean, they are the best defensive team that we're probably going to have in the NBA, them and the Philadelphia 76ers. But last night, what I thought was really, really intriguing was Patrick Beverly went right back to that junkyard dog mentality that he went in the playoffs with Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant, it only affected him for a short period of time, and then he just went to just annihilating him and just went on the attack offensively. Last night, they went after Steph, and with no Clay and no KD, Steph didn't have no fight in him. He tried to get into a chit-chat with them, but I just want to see how teams come after Steph this year because it's easy to have swag when you got Clay, you got Draymond, you got KD, but now you by yourself. Let's see what you got, bro. So this is, a, I believe, a very, very revealing year for Steph Curry as far as his legacy. All right, we got to take a break. That was a swaggy thing to say. The way he said it was all... Hey, what do the Browns need to do to upset the Patriots on Sunday? Talk some football next time. I'm out here by myself, man. Hey, no, you know I'm going to tell mean? you something. As far saying, as swaggy, y'all yeah. know I'm going to handle that. Oh, Nick yeah. ain't got no... To buy Best Western Hotels and Resorts. Book now at bestwestern.com. LeBron James has officially begun his 17th season in the NBA, but when the King is not on the court, he spends his off day watching every other game around the league.
Yeah, no, I watch all of them at the same time. I'm, I'm serious. No, I believe you're right. I can watch every yeah. last one of them at the same time. And then, depending on the game and the score, um, like the Brooklyn game in general, um, I saw the last, um, you know, possession, tie game. Well, Kyrie went up three, hit the three. Cat came back, tied the game. Kyrie got a pick and roll, got ice, pocket pass to Jared Allen, missed two free throws, rebound Torian Prince, block shot. Andrew Wiggins missed overtime, so I watched all the way until Kyrie missed the, you know, the shot at the end of the, you know, the overtime, and then I watched the rest of the games as well. I watched um, obviously a lot of the OKC um, Utah game because we play uh, Utah tomorrow, and CP is a great friend of mine. I watched all of the Cavs Orlando game, all of the Boston.